Hi everybody, I'm Claire from Rainbow Acrylics. I'm going to do a commission. Um, I did this piece um, a few days ago. I don't know if you, you saw the video. I'll link the video, the link for this video in the video description. Um, so it's my sunset over the ocean. Um, and I showed this to um, a friend of mine who's actually a customer who's now become a friend since, since I started paint pouring. Um, and she loved it. And she wants me to do this as a commission, but on a little tiny hexagonal canvas. Um, so I've got the canvas here. So in comparison, can you see it's tiny? So it's a 30 centimeter hexagonal canvas. So um, I'm gonna do it on here. I'm just gonna miss out some of the purple colors because she loves reds, sort of deep, deep reds, oranges, and yellows. So I'm gonna have much more red and then the gold, orange and yellow, and then very similar colours at the bottom um, to this piece, with the exception of that very dark Prussian blue phthalo I'm leaving out. So the dark blue, mid blue, um, turquoise, and then the sky blue um, at the bottom and some white. So I've, I've got the colours mixed up here, so I'll show you next. So I'm really excited. Here are my colours. Three Montmart colours, white, ultramarine blue and gold. Then I've got the Amsterdam sky blue. I've got two Essentials Royal and Langnickel colours, cerulean blue and cadmium yellow. Two Pebio Studio acrylics colours, both iridescent, the orange and the blue green. And then this is the red Windsor & Newton Galleria acrylic Alizar in crimson. Um, I am mixing all of these with my homemade pouring medium and that is mixed two parts PVA glue, in fact I can show you, it's this which I buy from Screwfix here in the UK, two parts PVA glue to one part water um, and then I have mixed all of these colours, in fact I'll show you them, they're, they're here ready, I have mixed them 50-50 pouring medium to paint. So in terms of the consistency, they are quite thick. Um, let me show you, show you the, try and show you the yellow. They are quite thick. However, I've thinned them slightly more than on the previous painting because what I found was that the colours are so thick they've left a bit of a ridge, um, which which I was expecting. But they, they, it's there's quite a ridge to the painting where I've I've laid down the ribbons of paint. So it's just fractionally thinner. So I'm hoping I'll get a slightly smoother result. So the pour I'm doing is a ribbon pour. So what I will do is layer up three cups here. So I've got the four blues and then the white. So I'm gonna add the white in at different points. So the first cup I'm going to do is going to be predominantly the dark blue, the um, ultramarine blue. Oh, I've just seen a big lump in it. Let's move that. Um, because that is going to be at the top of the sea, the sea at the horizon. So. Let's just pour some of the blue in. So this should be still be thick enough that when I mix, when I when I pour them in on top of each other, they're going to sit on top. So I thought I saw another lump. So I'm just going to drizzle this over the top. So I think this top cup, I'm just going to do the ultramarine blue and the this cerulean blue. So it's going to be nice and dark. And I learnt a lot from doing the last pour. Um, although I'm I'm very specific about the colours I'm putting into these cups, when I pour them out, what I found I was doing was overlapping a lot of the cups, uh, the paint. So overlapping on the canvas where I was pouring the cups out, if that makes sense. So you had lots of little drizzles from other cups on other sections of the painting. Yeah, there's definitely some lumps in that blue. I wonder if I just haven't mixed it well enough. Right, and then, I didn't put any white in, did I? Okay, let's actually start with a little bit of blue in the middle cup then, the dark blue.
So I'm now going to just layer up the sunset colours. Um, there's a little bit of white left and I want to use that, but I do not want to use it anywhere near the red because I don't really want pink. So I want a really lovely red cup at the top. So let's um, start with the red. So I think I'm going to do just red and orange for this first one. I'm going to start with the uh, with the uh, the sea. So I'm going to start. I'm going to do a horizontal line across. Now, it in the previous pause, I have done more sunset than sky. Uh, sorry, sunset than sea. And I think I'm going to do the same again, simply because um, the customer really likes the red colours. So I think what I will do. I think it will look a bit odd if I try and do a completely straight line diagonally across that. The cent right across the center there. All right, so I'm gonna. St I think I'm just gonna go for slightly lower because I think looking being offset will actually look slightly better. Um, other thing to mention is I've obviously got far too much paint here. Um, that is partly deliberate because I'm hoping to have a bit left over so I can actually um do something else with it. So if you think I've got loads of paint here, you're right. So let's go. So that is beautiful. There's some beautiful cerulean blue peeking through there. So let's go for the next cup. Right, I'm just, in terms of it being easier to tilt, to, to pour this on, I'm going to turn this round. Right, let's get this in the right order. So the palest first. And then the red. Right, really happy so far. Um, what shall I do? I think well, the way I think I'd prefer to do this is to try and now blend these colour bands and then do the tilting. So let's bring a bit of the orange down into the yellow section. A tiny bit of the yellow up into the orange section. And then the red down into the orange. So the way I'm doing this is I am just pouring just very, very thin beads of paint out. So I'm just letting, making it a lot slower. The cup, the cup is pouring a lot slower, but my hand is probably actually moving faster. Let's go even lower down. 
there. And do you know what? I think I might just bring that orange, which was the orange one, the orange up slightly here. Actually, no. I've just got a big block of red. I'm going to go through it with the red again, but see if I can get a bit more of an orange. Yeah, just like that. Happy with that. Right, I'll turn this round now. And do something quite similar with the blue colours. Right, I'm actually quite happy. I'm going to leave it there for a minute. I'm just going to torch it. So I mix these paints up this afternoon. Normally I'd mix them up, try and mix them up a lot earlier and let them settle more to get rid of all the bubbles, air bubbles. But I quite like bubbles in this style painting because then it just looks like water bubbles. It looks more like the sea. It gives some, um, just a few little cells. Um, so let's just start the, the tilt now because there is so much paint on here. Right, the sky, I'm not happy with the amount of red. I love the red, but it's just too stark. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more red to just to try and blend it a bit more. I'm so, so happy with it. Really pleased with it. Um, the blue, just it just looks so much like the sea because look, you've got these little ripples of white that go through it. Um, in the darker section, it's it's actually quite subtle, the darkness. it's It, it just looks like little waves, little ripples um, in the water. Um, and it's just coated the edges beautifully. It's such lovely thick paint. It just, it coats the edges so nicely. Um, the uh, sky, you've got the gorgeous red and orange at the top there. Um, it's not completely straight. Um, and I've decided that's a really good thing because if you look at a sunset or clouds or the sky, it's not straight. It, everything, nothing in nature is completely straight. There's waves, there's clouds. Um, so I am really happy. So I just hope it stays exactly like this and dries like this. So it's dried. I love it. I'm so happy with it. Just look how bright and bold the blues are in contrast to the beautiful sunset. Um, I really think it works well on this, this shape canvas. Really pleased with it. Um, I have added to it since it's been dry. So um, I just felt it needed a little bit of tweaking. So what I've done is added some extra dark blue along the horizon. And I brought the dark blue in slightly at the edges and a few extra wispy lines of dark blue. Just, I think the dark blue just got a little bit lost, so I've just added a little bit more. Um, also, I wanted the horizon to be a bit straighter. Um, I've also added a little bit more of the red. There was a red line here that kind of curved up, which is 
quite natural looking I think but it was a bit too curved I wanted it straighter so I've just added a little bit more red and also a little bit more orange just to I've just added where I just felt like it needed a bit a bit, a bit of enhancing um, if I just tilt this let me show you how iridescent this is look at that so at the top you've got the iridescent orange and then coming down lower you've got the iridescent gold and then at the bottom you've got you can't see it as well actually you've got the iridescent blue so the whole thing is just so beautifully shiny and sparkly um, so yeah I'm so so happy with it um, the red I think really works well and I think it works really well actually without having the purple at the top as well um, but yeah I'm just really pleased with the the bottom of the the horizon where the, the sea is great thank you so much for watching please do leave me comments I love to hear what your thoughts are um, on this painting um, and if you like it do hit the thumbs up button um, great take care everyone bye